Hi, I'm Bob Baker. Welcome to part 26 of 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist. In this one, I'm going to talk about a way to increase your sales and prosperity as an artist. Interested? I'll get to that in a second, but first I just want to make you aware that by the time you watch this, there may only be days, perhaps even hours left in my first ever fan funding campaign. It's for a new book that I'll be publishing called The Empowered Artist, but it's much more than about a book. It's a mission. It's a movement to inspire and empower creative people around the world. I would love for you to join me in this effort. You can contribute to the movement for as little as $10. Of course, there are higher levels where you get more and more perks at the higher the dollar amount is. But the best way to find out about that is to click the link below this video or somewhere on the page that will give you more information about it. And so if it's July 2nd, 2014 or earlier, click the link right away because time is running out. So over the last couple of videos, we talked about a number of important things. One was asking people to help you creating a call to action. In the last one, I talked about the importance of making it easy for people to do that thing that you're asking them to do. But specifically in this video, I'm going to talk about the money making aspect of those two things. Because you can ask people to do all sorts of things, you know, attend your free event or to share something or leave a comment or subscribe. And a lot of those things won't cost them a dime. But at some point in your creative career, you must ask for the sale. As I mentioned, and I believe part 16 of this series, it's important to have a business model and a structure. And I suggested at that time that you have three different levels of support, three different ways that people can pay you, starting from a low cost option, a more in-depth option, and then a higher priced option for those super fans or people that really want what you have. Okay, that's all great, but when it comes to marketing, building a career as an artist, as a musician, as a writer, you have to get on familiar terms with this thing that I call making offers. And making an offer can be as simple as just saying, hey, my new book or my new album is available, or you can buy a ticket to the play or the event, and you provide a link, you make it easy for them to do that. But what I have discovered and what I have taught over the years is that there's kind of an art and a science to making these offers. And like a lot of these videos, I'm only going to be scratching the surface on this topic. I've done entire workshops on this thing alone or at least segments on it that goes very much into depth. But so I'm going to give you some basic tips here. So what you want to do is to ask for the sale and make offers in a way that creates an incentive for people to do two things. One is you want them to buy now. If something is just perpetually on sale, uh, they could buy it now, they could buy it next week, next month, next year. There's no real incentive for them to move. And like I mentioned before, people are distracted. There's a lot of things going on. So they could easily say, oh, yeah, I really want to do that. I'll do that tomorrow. And then tomorrow never comes because they are off to something else. So you want to create incentives for people to buy now and also give them a reason for them to spend a little bit more. I mean, if you could increase your number of sales that you get every week or every month, but also increase the average dollar amount per sale, your income will grow. You'll either be able to supplement your income or perhaps, God forbid, be able to support yourself with your art someday when you do this. So here's some ways to create incentives for people to buy now. These are things you're familiar with because they're very common in the marketing and the sales world. and They're common because they work. But periodically, you want to have some sort of a special offer where there is a limited quantity or a limited time involved. You're basically using something called scarcity to motivate people. And even though it seems like it's overused in the sales world, it works. It's effective. It gives people a solid reason not to put the purchase off. So again, there's basically two ways to use scarcity. Quite often, it's a limited time. Like, I'm going to make this special offer, create this special package or this special price, and it's good through this Friday only. Give them a specific date when it ends, even a time, say midnight at the end of the day. You can even specify the time zone, midnight Eastern on Friday, such and such a date. You've got to purchase it by then to get this awesome deal. That's one way. Another way you can use scarcity is in the limited quantity. Say, I've got only 50 copies or 25 copies of this book or this album or this art print. They're personally signed. The first however many people that respond get it. You know, first come, first serve. That's another way to light a fire under people who really want your stuff. They're going, oh, geez, I want to be one of those special people. Again, not everyone's going to respond to this. You may even get the occasional person who's turned off by it, but just tune them out. 
because your most supportive fans will actually appreciate these offers. So that's two ways to do it. It's another thing I like to share with creative people about making offers. Quite often when you want to have a special promotion, the sort of the knee-jerk initial reaction or people think they have to do is to offer a discount. I'll offer a 20% discount to spur some sales. And that's cool. Yeah, you can do that every now and then. But that's not the only way to have a special offer. What if instead of lowering the price, you kept the price the same, but you added some extra value to it? Maybe as a musician, you have some unreleased tracks or live recordings of your songs. As an author, you've got some things that you've written or some supportive material to your book that is not normally available to the public that you can sort of include in this package as long as they order by Friday or the first 25 people get this extra goodie. For instance, recently I was looking for some sort of a new offer to make to my music marketing audience. Instead of offering a discount, which I considered, I realized that I had this online course that had a lot of great information in it, but the sales had kind of tapered off. And it was just sitting there and it was digitally delivered, so it didn't cost me anything really to get it into more people's hands. So I said to my mailing list, so for one week only, anybody that spends at least like 20 bucks or more, I'll give them free access to this course. So I didn't lower the price. They had to pay regular price for the $20 or whatever it was that they purchased that week. But I gave them an extra value, created an incentive because they had to get it by a certain date to get the extra goodie. So what could you do along those lines too? Another thing to keep in mind as you're planning these special promotions throughout the year is that you need to remind people more than once. Remember, people are distracted. Just don't send one email and say for the next week, here's the special offer and leave it at that. Send them one email on day one of the promotion. Send them another email halfway through it. And then the morning of the final day, actually send another message. And in the subject line, put last chance or final day to get the XYZ package. And believe me, I've got the data for my own sales to back this up. Most of your sales will probably come in in that last day. So the overall strategy with making offers is this. You're going to have stuff that's available throughout the year. But periodically, you want to offer these special sales, and you want to mix them up. So one point, you might do a limited time sale. A month or two later, do a limited quantity sale on something special. And when you have a whole line of products, then you can bundle them, and you can create packages where they actually do get a discount compared to the price of buying the individual items. But you bundle them and say, when you get this whole package, you're actually saving 30% or 40% or whatever it is but make them aware of the savings that they get when they buy the bundle. So you don't want to bombard people with sale after sale after sale. You like Maybe every other month you do a special promotion for a week or two, and you mix and match how you present it and what the offer is. But believe me, when you get comfortable with this making offers thing, and you specifically tell people what they get and what the limitation is, and you remind them during any given promotion multiple times about the sale or the special offer, you will see your income rise. So please, just get over your squeamishness about it. I don't want to be salesy, whatever. You can do it in a cool and authentic way. Do it in your voice, but do it. Make offers. So like I said, I'm only going to scratch the surface here, but I wanted to plant the seed of this idea here to make offers, use scarcity, use limited time, limited quantity, added value, and mix and match how you present these throughout the year. If you do that, I think you just might get some more sales coming in. If you found this helpful, please share it with a creative person in your life who could use the information. And please click the link to the Empowered Artist Movement and Fan Funding Campaign. If it's on or before July 2nd, 2014, there's still time for you to get involved in this crucial movement to inspire and empower musicians and writers and visual artists and more around the planet. I would greatly appreciate your support. That's it for this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another segment in the 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist series. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now.